Dubai Group recently partnered with the Commonwealth Business Council. The summit addressed how emerging markets can increase investment inflows, trade and capacity in sectors that allow them to create a sustainable competitive advantage. CBC says that with the growth of the global economy, national and regional boundaries are losing their relevance. Countries must increasingly take a, a more global view of opportunities for growth. Well, our guest today on Inside Business is Professor Stephen Godfrey, who is Managing Director of the Commonwealth Business Council. Thanks for being with us today, Professor Stephen. Now, can I begin by asking you uh, to take us through the, uh, the work and the reach of the Commonwealth Business Council? The Commonwealth, uh, Greg, is 53 countries, as you know. The Commonwealth Business Council is the private sector arm of the Commonwealth set up by heads of government 10 years ago to promote trade and investment. We're a private sector body with uh, 15 global business leaders from across the Commonwealth uh, on the board. Now, how did you yourself get involved in uh, the Commonwealth Business Council? Uh, well, I um, was uh, actually a, an official of the Commonwealth Secretariat, which is the intergovernmental office. I ran the program in South Africa during the transition, but when the Commonwealth uh, leaders said they wanted to focus more on the economic agenda of the Commonwealth, I got involved in the Business Council. What advice do you give to businesses during this unprecedented downturn in global economies? Well, I think, you know, uh, all the evidence suggests that companies which manage to invest in the difficult times are the ones that prosper when the recovery comes. So I think what we're doing at this forum is we're very much looking at ways that companies can develop new business relationships through events like this in perhaps countries and markets where they haven't traditionally operated. So I think it's time to be confident and bold and not to be overwhelmed by all the bad news but look at the long term the world economy has now many more consumers, many more countries operating sort of essentially market-based economic systems and I think that's a very positive fact. Now many people are blaming the banks and the, uh, the banks in many cases have stopped giving out loans, what's the answer, do you think? Well, I mean, obviously, particularly banks in, 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 in G8 countries in the United States and Canada mispriced uh, risk. So they were heavily over leveraged. We know all that. Um, I mean, there will be a time for people to understand who was responsible, but I don't think playing a blame game now is very constructive. You know, the banking system is fundamental to the health of the entire economy, and we have to take practical steps to get lending going, and that, I think, is what will be being looked at, uh, not just by G8 countries, but by the, the G20 when they meet in London in April. Now, there's been a gloomy prediction about 50 million job losses worldwide. Uh, in what area of business do you think we will see the most losses? Well, I don't think any area will be exempt, but I mean, obviously, areas that are of concern to a lot of emerging markets are uh, you know, large-scale investments, infrastructure development that are important for the general health of the economy, where the ability to identify sources of capital you know, have been quite constrained. Um, the second thing is, of course, trade. Trade's vulnerable. If um, trade finance can't be got going again, then that will be a dampener on all trade. But I don't think any sector is exempt. Now, Professor Stephen, I mean, how can Arab nations help in the work of the Commonwealth Business Council? The emerging markets in particular are looking to see uh, the Arab world take a, a greater leadership in the development of, of the global economy. So I think what we're trying to do um, at our forum with the Dubai Group is build new linkages, perhaps with uh, non-traditional markets of Arab countries, where there's a desire not just to look at the sources of capital, but of some of the uh, expertise which has been developed in key sectors here, for example, in Dubai. Do you think that the present conditions will spur entrepreneurship or stall it? Well, I think if you look historically, uh, you've seen um, a situation where in emerging markets uh, in Southeast Asia, but now increasingly in Africa and, of course, in the Americas, you've seen a resurgence of entrepreneurship in the sense that you know, many governments have recognized that without a strong and vibrant private sector, it's not possible to create sustainable growth. So I don't think that we should look at the current economic climate as any sort of a comment on entrepreneurship, rather the opposite. It seems to me that um, we're going to see a growth of entrepreneurship in the private sector across the uh, global economy, even though governments are going to change the way they regulate and engage with the economy. But I don't think anybody seriously is saying that we want to move back to what we had in a number of emerging markets where government tried to not only run the country but run the economy too. Okay, well that's where we'll leave it for now. Professor Stephen Godfrey, Managing Director of the Commonwealth Business Council, thank you very much for your time today. Thanks very much, Greg.
Well, there we have it. Sit for this edition of Inside Business. You can contact the program as ever by writing to ib at city7tv.com. For now, from all of us on the team for this edition of the program, goodbye, and we'll see you again soon.